A bit slow on the uptick, are we? Well, that means I'm out of your league. I always let people get one blow in as a tribute because I can't restrain my punches well enough when I turn back. And so I usually end up killing them. Hello and welcome to Hunter Hunter 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the Hunter Hunter world. And today we are going to take the time to examine the powerhouse Nen master, Biscuit Kruger, better known as Bisky. Bisky is a seemingly cutesy young girl who first appeared in the Greed Island arc. However, this isn't exactly an accurate representation of her because believe it or not, Bisky is actually a wildly muscular 57 year old woman who is capable of changing her appearance through Nen. And interestingly enough, unlike most Nen abilities in the series, Bisky isn't actually sure how she acquired this power. However, it does stem from the idea that the art of Nen is essentially an expression of one's will and desires. And so for most of her life, what Bisky wanted was simply to not look like herself. Bisky absolutely loads her natural appearance. And so after years and years of wishing for it to change, it slowly but surely did. And now she's capable of assuming a form that she would say better reflects her idea of femininity. And of course, as a result, Bisky can be prone to the odd violent outburst when reminded of her true form or true age, which is a terrifying idea because the cutesy appearance is certainly not to be underestimated. In her true form, Bisky possesses immense superhuman strength and she retains quite a lot of that in her preferred form. Having been shown to be capable of inflicting instantly debilitating blows without even resorting to the use of Nen. Although on the flip side, it's actually incredibly easy to get on Bisky's good side as all you have to do is engage in, you know, a little bit of light aesthetic flattery and all of a sudden one Biscuit Kruger becomes a very agreeable person to deal with. With that said, when it comes to the realm of martial arts, Bisky is incredibly stern and serious towards both opponents and even allies. She studied at the Shingen Ryu School of Kung Fu founded by Isaac Netero and is an incredibly talented and merciless combatant who has no qualms whatsoever with killing should the situation call for it. And using her skills combined with her temperament, Bisky is one of the rare individuals who holds the rank of a double star hunter in this world, meaning that she has fulfilled the first five articles of the Hunter bylaws, has mentored a student, held an official position, and has produced a remarkable achievement in a particular field. Now in Bisky's case, we don't know what the achievement is, but she is a stone hunter, which is someone who focuses on searching out precious gems or other assorted niceties. And in fact, it would be these pursuits that would lead Bisky to becoming a player in the Greed Island game in order to seek out a rare stone by the name of Blue Planet, which she, via various means of accessing classified information, had discovered could only be obtained in the game. After entering Greed Island, Bisky came across Gon and Killua, and after being denied an opportunity to join their group, she immediately set her sights on ruining their friendship beyond repair, showing a, uh, well, a very vindictive side to Bisky there. However, eventually, Bisky becomes incredibly impressed by the potential of the boys and declares herself their teacher. Now, very notably, Gon and Killua were not Bisky's first students. And in fact, her former apprentice was a man by the name of Wing, who was actually responsible for initially teaching Gon and Killua about Nen at Heaven's Arena. But as expected from the teacher of their teacher, Bisky possessed significantly more advanced knowledge and abilities in regards to Nen. And just on that, Bisky herself is a transmuter. However, she has also demonstrated proficiency in emission enhancement and manipulation, the latter of which is particularly impressive due to the fact that manipulation is the hardest Nen type for transmuters to master. In fact, Bisky's particular signature Hatsu rely on a combination of trans mutation, emission, and manipulation, resulting in the summoning of a Nen masseuse whom Bisky calls Cookie. Cookie then goes on to perform what is called magical spa services, whereby she applies a Nen transmuted lotion that is designed to relieve fatigue as well as restore general vitality, making Bisky's abilities very well suited for efficient training purposes. In fact, one such technique is known as the piano massage, which allows her recipient to have the equivalent of eight hours sleep within a mere 30 minutes, as well as accelerating the restoration of aura. Pretty damn amazing, really. One of the more incredibly underrated Nen abilities I think in the entire series. And it would be this mechanism whereby Gon and Killua were able to receive the equivalent of a year's training in a single month. But Bisky is also a master of the common major and advanced principles of Nen, with one of her crowning showcases being the power to hold an ability called Ko for 30 minutes straight. And this is very, very impressive because Ko is essentially a combination of almost every other principle, but namely Ten, Zetsu, Ren, Hatsu, and Gyo, all in one neat little package. So it is not a simple thing to pull off, let alone master to the point where you could hold it for 30 minutes. And while Bisky was teaching such magnificent techniques to Gon and Killua, she became more and more enamored by their potential and decided to remain with them on their quest to complete the Greed Island game, assisting in the battle to stop the bombers or playing dodgeball against Razor. 
which was a much, much harder task than I think I've made it sound. But in the end, the three of them managed to clear the game, and as thanks, Gon selected Blue Planet as one of his rewards, and then presented it to Bisky, who proceeded to name it Pluchan. After this, the trio go their separate ways, with Gon and Killua seeking out Gon's father, Jing, although they would soon reunite when Bisky was contacted by Palm Siberia to train Gon and Killua once more in order to win their arranged match against the duo of Knuckle and shoot. And rather importantly, it would be during this one month training period that Bisky enlightened Killua to the fact that he had an artificial sense of fear installed into him, which would lead to a moment of extreme growth for Killua later on in the Chimera Antark. However, after doing everything she could for the boys, Bisky once again said her goodbyes as they went on to face Knuckle and shoot in combat, and then later became part of the Chimera Ant extermination team. Following the events of the Chimera Antark, Bisky became one of the many hunters who volunteered to guard Gon in hospital, and at the same time, by virtue of being a well-known double star hunter, Bisky also became a candidate to take the role of the 13th chairman of the Hunter Association, following the death of Isaac Netero. Proving very, very popular, Bisky made it all the way through to the fifth round. However, she could not secure enough votes to move on to the sixth, thus ending her campaign. But most recently, Bisky was approached by Karapika to accompany a vast array of hunters, as well as the royal family of the Karkin Empire on a voyage to the Dark Continent continent, where she, as with everyone else aboard, has become embroiled in the Kakin Succession War. Bisky was recommended for this position by Killua, who also gave Karapika fair warning of how to deal with Bisky, you know, in regards to complimenting her beauty. And as such, Karapika was immediately able to earn Bisky's trust by stating that he would never have hired such a delicate flower without Killua's recommendation. And it really was that simple. From that moment on, Bisky was willing to do whatever Karapika was planning. And speaking of, as for her specific role, Bisky applied and was selected to be a bodyguard of 13th Prince Mario, the second youngest of the legitimate Kakin royalty and one of the most under-resourced competitors in the contest. During this time, Bisky has also become a close compatriot of Hanzo, who was also hired by Karapika to become a bodyguard, although his charge, 12th Prince Momoze, was quickly murdered, and so Hanzo joined Bisky in protecting Mario instead. Rather interestingly, Momoze is thought to have been killed by a clone-type Nen ability, which would greatly incriminate Hanzo if his power were to be discovered. And so when the topic of Nen came up in Mariam's quarters, Bisky took the initiative and revealed her own ability Ability, thus protecting Hanzo. Bisky showing her true form also had another unintended result as well, in that Verge, the captain of Mariam's guards, immediately fell head over heels for Bisky, describing her as follows. How can someone so beautiful exist? The beautiful yet sinister line from the trapezius muscle all the way to the deltoids and her hamstring. It's a quiet yet tyrannical bulge. And he probably went on and on in his head like this. And needless to say, from that moment on, Fergie became much more cooperative, shall we say, in regards to Bisky, and even volunteered to be taught Nen by her, despite the fact that he had previously held the belief that such a power was mere superstition. Some more fun facts about Bisky. Bisky, rather unapologetically I might add, holds a keen enjoyment for naked men, as demonstrated when she became very excited at the sight of a less than clothed Hisoka during the Greed Island arc. In addition to this, Bisky is also a frequent reader of men's fashion magazines in her spare time. Although I guess the term reader gets applied pretty liberally here. I mean, more accurately, Bisky can be described as a gawker of men's fashion magazines. According to the Hunter x Hunter manual section contained within the Yu Yu Hakusho official character book, Bisky is one of the more superbly accomplished individuals within the series, having scored an incredibly impressive array of numbers within the areas of mind, skill, body, nen, ingenuity, and intelligence, making her, according to these statistics, one of the most well-rounded characters in all of Hunter x Hunter. Speaking of Yu Yu Hakusho though, as with many characters in Hunter x Hunter, Bisky does bear strong parallels to a figure in Togashi's previous story, in this case, being Genkai, who both served as mentor figures capable of transforming into younger incarnations of themselves and who are both comically referred to using old lady names by their students. Bisky's name is more than likely inspired by the idea of a Bisky doll, which are really creepy, shiny, lifelike doll things that were incredibly popular during the late 1800s and nowadays are only really good for serving as nightmare fuel. Despite being a master of at least four different brands of Nen, Bisky's body transformation technique does not have a defined category of use. It does, however, fit the criteria for a specialist ability, which generally arise directly from the wishes of the user. But if that were to be the case, then Bisky would be classified as a specialist rather than a transmuter. So for now, that will remain a bit of a mystery. And finally, a truly useless fact, in the 1999 anime adaptation, Killua does not initially count Bisky as one of the Greed Island candidates because he mistakes her for a doll, and is very, very startled when Bisky does actually move.
But that pretty much does it for Bisky. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the New World Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share or subscribe because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what or where you'd like to see featured on the next Hunter x Hunter 101. Do you think Jing is actually one of the strongest character? All right, this is a tough question. One that I could probably waffle on for for like an entire video. But Jing is a very tricky existence because we still effectively know absolutely nothing about him. I mean, typical shonen logic would dictate that a character in his position would almost certainly be one of the strongest characters. But at the same time, I have a problem with using the term strongest, especially in regards to Hunter x Hunter, because it implies that the only thing to consider in the equation is power. And I think it neglects aspects like intelligence, which I believe is Jing's primary strength, until proven otherwise at least. He probably does have some crazy cool abilities, but the thing that makes him a top tier figure in this world is just how masterfully he is able to apply himself. If we're going on raw strength, I don't think I'd put Jing up there as one of the strongest, but as soon as you throw any other factor into the mix, then yes, he is more than likely a world-class level of danger all on his own. Have you watched Gundam 00? Yes, actually, and fun fact, 00 was my first proper Gundam series. Before that, I had a hard time getting into the Gundam realm because I used to watch a bit of Wing and Seed here and there when they were on Cartoon Network, but they never really gripped me at that age. But later on in high school, a good friend of mine heavily pushed Gundam 00 in my general direction, and I was just like, uh, all right, I'll watch it, I guess. And I loved it. I think the first season is near perfection, but sadly, I definitely didn't enjoy the second season anywhere near as much. But in any case, 00 did convince me to give other Gundam series a chance as well, and I'm really glad that I did eventually take the plunge into that insane universe. Face reveal when? Uh, face reveal now, I guess? I often forget that my face isn't actually on this channel, because on my other channel, my face is actually the profile picture. Although come to think of it, I really should change that to the Grand Line Review logo. Whatever the case, here's the face. Enjoy!